we talk about the internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. Kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days, just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. Change is behind all great achievements. We are at a historic turning point. It allowed us to go from ideas to space. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. The progress Ripple's making for the industry is moving the whole revolution forward. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. Big time move in XRP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss any new videos. From the beginning of time, each passing age has left behind some vital knowledge, improving its earlier marvels and developing newer miracles. We are living in the age of disruption. Times of change not seen in generations. Companies like Uber, Netflix, Amazon, and all other game-changing technologies have disrupted their respective industries. So after all the major industries have changed, it was time for the king of industries to be disrupted. Let's face it, physical money is becoming like this, relics of a different age, and soon will only be found in places like this. In other words, hard cash is disappearing. It's becoming digital, transferred by things like these. Today, we can send and receive information instantly, yet the same can't be said when it comes to sending money. We're still stuck in the past. Due to the ongoing global pandemic, which continues to force many businesses into the digital realm, real-time payments are becoming more important than ever. This is a trillion dollar problem. We all know what this is. It's money. And people like you use money every day. As a concept, money is not meant to remain static. Money serves its purpose only when it moves from one hand to another and from one place to another. The concept of exchange of value has evolved over time, from clay tokens to metal coins to paper notes and cryptocurrencies, each new form aiming to eliminate the downfalls of its predecessors. International money transfers have also evolved over time, with the changing shape of money and breakthroughs in technology. The last 150 years show us an evolution in the money transfer industry, yet there still hasn't been a dramatic change in the global payment landscape as much as the rise in payment volumes demands. As long as there's money, they have banks to handle and service it. I, I figure both are going to be around for a long time. In 1973, 239 banks from 15 countries got together to solve the problem of cross-border payments. The banks formed a faster alternative to telex messages called SWIFT. What is SWIFT? SWIFT is a private uh, financial messaging service that's based in Belgium and uh, what that means is it facilitates the international financial transactions of most of the world. There are a bunch of different systems like SWIFT, but SWIFT is by far the most popular. It serves 11,000 financial institutions in over 200 countries. And basically when anyone wants to buy or sell something internationally, SWIFT is the one that takes the payment information or the destination that the you know, money is going to and makes sure that uh, you know, money reaches the right place in a secure fashion. And this replaced the telex system, which was basically SWIFT before SWIFT. And this system did the same thing, but it was was much slower and it didn't have a standardized universal code system like Swift does, so Swift was kind of an improvement hmm. on this outdated system. So if you've ever made a bank transfer, you were probably using Swift. Although it plays a crucial role in international money transfer, Swift does not actually move money. Their network sends messages between banks that allow them to make transfers. It handles more than five trillion dollars worth of transactions every single day. That's a market worth more than a quadrillion dollars annually. With SWIFT, the transactions are fast, but settlements happen much later. They average a three-day waiting period with a 7% failure rate and are very costly to execute. 
Reuters citing an interview with the head of global security for SWIFT in which that official says that since the famous Bank of Bangladesh hacking incident earlier this year, there have been a meaningful number of other attacks on client banks, that is, banks that use the SWIFT financial messaging system. He's also saying that about a fifth of those hacking attempts have resulted in stolen funds. That's according to... At the end of the day, we're talking about a system that was created 50 years ago. A settlement time of 48 hours might have been great in the 70s, but in 2020, we're in need of a better solution. It's time for a new standard. said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Do you think this is really going to take off to that extent? You know, we do. We, we, when we look at the world, uh, you see a world completely connected on an information web. But what we don't have is the sense of a value web. Payments, the exchange of value is still pre-internet based on 40-year-old technology. And so that's very expensive. That really slows e-commerce. Lots of parts of the world don't have the ability to make payments. So this new technology that really is a second gen of Bitcoin enables now value to be exchanged in the same way that information is currently exchanged. And that's a big deal, we think. If you replace swift messages with a digital asset that moves faster than the message, you get near real-time money settlements. There's no Nostro accounts, just value moving at the speed of data. We found this very interesting tech company called Ripple that we're going to invest in, right? Okay, what is Ripple? So Ripple is basically a platform to allow people to transfer money from bank account to bank account, person to person, really securely, really simply, really quickly. And it runs on this stuff called XRP, which is a cryptocurrency, but basically it's just a way to get value from here to there. On behalf of Ripple, we'd like to give you $4 million. <laughs> Usually people come out with the big giant check and do the like big giant check thing, but we can actually transfer it into Rwandan francs right now, right here. And all we have to do is push this button and it's in your account. Do you want to push it? You want me to push I it? I would like to push it. <laughs> Bingo. Thank you. Thank you, Ripple, for doing this. And, and now uh, everybody knows how to, you can just send money easily like that. I, what a great thing. Much like Netflix destroyed Blockbuster and Uber destroyed the taxi industry, this is the biggest transformation in the structure of how humans exchange value since the dawn of the internet. Ripple is the company that's aiming to make money move as fast as information. But it's their digital asset XRP that's holding the real key to the global payment puzzle. One example is Ripple. It's a platform used to make international monetary transactions faster and cheaper. Now, one way Ripple facilitates that is by using the cryptocurrency XRP. I asked CEO Brad Garlinghouse to explain what XRP actually is and how it all works. XRP is like a Bitcoin. It's a digital asset. What we do is we take a transaction between banks and instead of having a bank pre-fund an account at the other bank, which is how correspondent banking works today, the Bank of Brad in dollars would pre-fund the Bank of Julia, perhaps in pounds, and then I would debit and credit that. But that means I have to pre-fund and have dormant capital sitting at that other bank. What we allow banks to do, we allow payment providers to do, is to tap into the liquidity of XRP liquidity. So today there's lots of liquidity between XRP and US dollar. There's lots of liquidity between XRP and British Pound. And you could tap into that to move value in real time, in seconds. XRP is meant to be a digital way to move value, to move digital money, if you will. And it's really focused on that. So there are other cryptocurrencies. Ether is an example of something that they can do all kinds of stuff, including move value. Some people in the industry look at that and say, well, why is Ether so slow to close the transaction? Well, maybe because it's trying to do too much or just trying to do so much or it can do so much. XRP is purely focused on value. It can do, you know, Visa like 1500 transactions per second. We don't have digital value right now. You know, when you send someone a Venmo payment, they don't actually get the money for like three to five days. They might, they might credit an account, but there's risk being taken by the company there, and that's why the fees are so high. When our, one of our customers uses XRP to move money from Thailand to, to Spain, it happens in less than a minute or two, and it's very uh, accurate and quick to do so. 
In fact, XRP was the best performing asset in 2017's crypto bull market. Ripple is on a mission to make money more accessible to people all around the world. It's a hot new cryptocurrency and it's blowing up. Take a look at this. It is a big time move in XRP. So is Ripple the next big breakout coin? And if so, how do you even buy it? We'll walk you through how to buy it now. So Ripple has been on an absolute tear. Where XRP and Ripple have focused is really being a real world use case and solving a real problem. And I think as the market has recognized the traction we're seeing with banks, the market has responded and the price of XRP is up, as, as mentioned earlier, about 4,000%. Yeah, 4,000%, that's a pretty incredible number. And what a rally there's been for these big three. XRP enjoying gains of 186%. Thank you, Ripple. XRP's main function is to serve as a bridge asset between currencies. So why should banks care? As of today, trillions of dollars are stuck with banks waiting to be used for payments. When one bank needs to send money across borders, it uses the dead cash it's holding at the foreign institution to which it is sending funds to. The whole process involves counterparty risk and the expensive vetting procedures that goes along with it. As you know, today banks, when they fund, they keep Nostra accounts with other institutions and we estimate there is about five to ten trillion dollars that's stuck of depositors money that's lying elsewhere around the world with capital risk depreciation risk and all the things that go with it and that's the reason remittances are too expensive but if you use cryptos to do just-in-time settlement that five to ten trillion dollars can come back home reducing the cost for financial institutions which in turns can make remittances cheaper to solve this ripple is using XRP to provide banks with liquidity on demand we have a product which is called on-demand liquidity and rather than pre-funding uh, in the destination country, you can source on-demand liquidity. So you imagine you are a payment service provider, you want to send $100 to Mexico uh, and you use uh, actually our uh, native uh, digital asset which is called uh, XRP as a bridge currency between the two uh, fiat currencies. So changing from USD to XRP and immediately after to Mexican peso. Mm. This is really revolutionizing actually the way that the money is handled. XRP is perfect for this because the average transaction costs a mere three one hundredths of a penny and is confirmed within three seconds. In addition, the Ripple Ledger can process more than a thousand transactions per second. We use XRP because it's a thousand times faster than Bitcoin transactions and a thousand times cheaper than a Bitcoin transaction. We think the utility of XRP is such that it's the most efficient digital assets to solve this problem. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world pre-funded between banks between corporates. And if we can make that tr those trillions of dollars more efficient, we make the entire global financial ecosystem more efficient. If we can deliver a better product for a better price, banks and other financial institutions will get on board. With XRP, banks will essentially have gold that you can teleport into any vault in the world instantly. XRP is a fantastic currency to use for, among other things, hedge funds. We need to move a lot of money very quickly. We make investments all over the world. Our LPs come from all over the world. And using banks to move money is a pain in the I mean, it takes a day or two to move money around the world. And with XRP, our very first close was 50 million. We moved that money in, and I'm not kidding you, in like three seconds. And I think it costs 20 or 30 cents. Um, that's... That, you really need to think about that. Their technology has essentially solved payments. I got it. I got it. It's the difference between a horse and buggy and a Tesla. And I'd never heard of Ripple at the time. And I thought, and they said, Swift is going to be put out of business by Ripple. And I thought, that's quite handy. I'll phone up Swift and see what they think. That'll make a good story for the paper. And Swift said, actually, we're taking this really seriously. We think it could affect us in lots of ways. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, I think what we're doing and executing on a day-by-day -day basis is in fact taking over Swift. You know, we've now signed up you know, well over 100 banks. Some of the largest Swift-enabled banks in the world are now using Ripple's technology. Just last week, we saw a remittance company who's using Ripple's technology. They reduced the price per transaction to their consumers from $20 per transaction to $2 per transaction, and they saw an 800% increase in usage overnight. That's the type of dynamic that SWIFT isn't able to support that we're able to address right now. In short, SWIFT is slow and expensive. XRP is fast and cheaper to use. But it's not just about speed. 
XRP is attempting to take over all retail transactions and international money transfers. Trillions of dollars of dormant capital will be released once Ripple replaces SWIFT. Uh, again, to tell you a story, three years ago, we actually experimented with uh, 12 banks uh, across different geographies who did not have pre-funding relationship with each other. We gave them a bunch of digital asset called XRP and asked them to use it to say, see if it works for cross-border payments as a bridge currency. Uh, they came back to us after six months and they said, look, it works beautifully, but there are, we cannot use this. And there are two issues with, with this. Number one, it's highly volatile, so we cannot use it. Number two, my regulator will never allow me me to use this. There is no risk waiting to this and it's too volatile. There is no way the central banks will allow me to use this. This was in 2015-16. So we went back to the drawing board and came up with a new product, uh, as I mentioned, ODL, on-demand liquidity. And basically what that product does is, through that product, banks do not have to hold a digital asset on their books. They could leverage that product, connect with a digital asset exchange, which, mind you, is fully, ex fully licensed and supervised, and then leverage that exchange to source liquidity in real time. And because the entire transaction happens in less than 30 seconds, because of the speed of the, the ledger, uh, the volatility risk is taken care of. So we removed the two big concerns that banks and payment providers had and almost productized it in a way, and then we launched the product uh, last year in October. You see, the hard part about getting banks to use a blockchain isn't the blockchain, it's everything else. Governance, compliance, integration with banking systems and so on. Ripple has been making the right moves with the IMF, central banks, authorities and regulators all around the world. We don't think governments are going away. We don't think banks are going away. We don't think fiat currency is going away. But we still think there's a role for digital assets to play in reducing friction and accelerating the speed and reducing costs associated with payments. So when I started to talk to Chris Larson, they were recruiting to hire somebody as COO. Being a Bitcoin enthusiast or a crypto enthusiast married with, I thought, a very pragmatic vision of how you actually bring this forward. And revolutions rarely happen by going to the end point first. Instead, it's, you know, it's, I use the expression internally about crawl, walk, run. You, know, you gotta crawl before you walk, before you run. And I think the progress Ripple's making for the industry is moving the whole revolution forward. Right now, Ripple's XRP-powered cross-border payment product, on-demand liquidity, is moving nearly 10% of the remittance volume from the US to Mexico, $3 billion worth of value to be exact. And that's just one payment corridor that Ripple is targeting. One of the things that we're seeing at Bitso, and it's very interesting, is that we used to dream about doing cross-border payments or remittances, and this used to be only a vision, and we're starting to see that really happening. If we analyze what we're doing on a weekly basis today, we are at 1.5% of the remittance corridor between the US and Mexico, which is the largest corridor in the world with $35 billion a year. So if you think that's 1.5%, which is nothing, but it's amazing in the dimension of what we're talking about, the opportunity to us, it can blow our minds. Now why is this significant? Because we are talking about just one currency pair corridor out of potentially tens of thousands. With more than $5 trillion worth of transactions transferred just by SWIFT alone in a single day, we're looking at, at a quadrillion dollar market annually. That being said, as it stands today, there aren't enough XRP in the world at the current price to facilitate the global demand that money transfer requires. So, if XRP is to replace institutional and retail financial systems, it needs to have a much higher price. In other words, the price of XRP has to be higher to increase its liquidity. In theory, in order for XRP to move value equivalent to SWIFT's $5 trillion a day, the price would have to be around $100 per XRP, and that's just SWIFT. Since Ripple has essentially solved payments, almost everything will eventually fall into their system in one way or another. New companies like Amazon and Uber need a seamless global experience. They don't want to integrate with a new API or three different mobile payment companies in every country that they want to communicate with. They need fast payments. It might seem crazy at first, but just imagine if XRP captures just 10% of the market within the next few years. The sky is truly the limit. 
The next question is, how do we get there? As Ripple captures more of the market and continues to drive the use of on-demand liquidity, the price of XRP will slowly rise to meet the demand due to the rising volumes of transfers. Once enough currency pair corridors and volume is flowing through the system, there won't be enough XRP in the world to facilitate global demand at current prices. Therefore, price will need to rise to meet that demand. If Ripple has its way, it will do more than knock out Swift. It will have found a way to make money move like information instantly. I have to say this year has been interesting. The rise of digital payments anyway due to COVID. Some big investors throwing the towel in and saying, fine, I was a skeptic. I've changed my mind. Square, PayPal getting involved. I want to hone in on the evolution of what I see going on at Ripple. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. We've seen some management changes, but I also see sort of the, the building of a facility that plugs directly into exchanges, sourcing liquidity, rebalancing payment flows globally. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point, our vision really is how do we make this plug and play as simple as possible to plug in and take advantage of global liquidity across the XRP ecosystem. It is so clear to me more than ever that XRP's speed, its scalability, its incredibly low cost per transaction dynamics make it perfectly suited for the problem we are solving with it. And again, we're seeing that the community behind XRP, the other use cases, we're seeing that grow every week. Fast forward two years, where's Ripple? If you made it to the end of this video, let me know in the comments if you're bullish or bearish on XRP in 2021. Also, make sure you subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.